Oh my god. Good afternoon, this is Melanie Bluegrass with Abolition News Network. Today is June 1st, 1855, and today we have with us in the studio someone of great repute uh, from one of the major religions here to talk about his stance on slavery. Um, this person is a Baptist minister, as well as president of Brown University. In 1835, he wrote the book, Moral Science, and it is required reading at Brown. Please welcome to our program, Francis Wayland. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Miss Bluegrass. And I do appreciate your mentioning my book, Moral Science, in which slavery is labeled as an evil. Well, let's, let's jump right to the question I, I really want to ask you. Uh, are you willing to make a firm stance on abolishing slavery? Well, wait, wait. First, let me explain. I do con condemn slavery in the book, but I suggest that we take a more slow approach to the development of uh, this remedy. We must, for example, take a conciliatory stand which I feel is more effective for reform. Mm -hmm. A conciliatory, conciliatory stance. What does that mean? Well, um, let me use as an example, as I wrote to my friend, Reverend Fuller, fellow Baptist minister, uh, that we Christians have a sort of a moral duty to um, take care of the slaves for those who are slave owners and govern them uh, according to Christian principles. And this would include teaching them to read the Bible. Um, however, uh, it's not really desirable nor dictated by Christian morals to free slaves. That is the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard. Not desirable for who? For them? So explain to us exactly where you say that. Well, uh, let me describe it in this way. Um, there should be a separation of religion and politics. Otherwise, the sectional tension uh, which necessarily results would otherwise be intolerable. So we must ban discussion of it, and which I do in the classrooms by preventing my students from discussing abolition. Okay, so what are you getting to? Well, slavery defies human remedy. This is something which requires divine intervention as only God can solve this problem. I've got to step in here. You are weaseling out, mister. You're taking no responsibility for yourself or all the downtrodden slaves in this country. You expect God to step in with a plan and a personal help, personnel to handle all the African Americans while you appease the slaveholders and your Southern Baptist friends. Well, Miss Barbara Wire, is it? Uh, we must take a conciliatory approach, otherwise there will be sectarian divisions within the Baptist Church. And you must admit, African Americans are an inferior race compared to the white people and in fact in my book I describe that I'm in favor of colonizing them back to Africa perhaps in Liberia. I have to admit to no such thing. In fact you are the reason the abolitionists are mad. You are a do-nothing, all-talking, no-functioning person. African Americans are part of the social burden upon white society which they must shoulder in a Christian way. Well, okay. <laughs> this conversation is getting nowhere. I want to wrap this up. Um, I do want to ask you, what is your stance on the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which was enacted a year ago, which states that uh, both slaveholders and people without slaves can go and settle the new territory. 
What is your what is your Christian viewpoint? On well, that? thank you for asking. I am of the opinion that extension of slavery to Nebraska territory is not something that I can support. However, for those Christians who do, they must obey the law, I feel, or else suffer the consequences of their of following their conscience. Fellow our fellow evangelicals must be recruited as allies, which is much more important than, uh, than uh, fighting this slavery issue because we must fight the indifference to religion that is so pervasive in modern society. That is the worst speech that I've ever heard a general give to his troops. Don't follow your conscience. Ms. Bugress, I like to cross-examine the witness. Well, he's not a witness. He's a guest. I have a few questions I jotted down. Oh, okay. If, if, if you feel like you can shed some light on this vague approach that he's taking towards slavery and, and maybe bring some enlightenment to our guests, then feel free. Alrighty then. My questions are to get to the answer to this question. Can a slaveholder be a Christian and I want you to tell me the truth. Yes, provided he has the spirit of Christ. Can a man claim a right to sunder husbands and wives, parents and children, to compel and to work without wages, to forbid them to read the Bible and buy and sell them? And uh, who habitually does these things? Well, yes, I believe that he can. You're a pig, you piece of well, I'm not going to tolerate oh, this yeah. nonsense, I'll tell you right now. Oh. See, you insulted him. I wanted you to be polite, barbed wire. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. Now he'll continue to take this conciliatory approach and there'll still be that split between the Northern Baptists and the Southern Baptists. <sighs> well, this is Melanie Bluegrass with Abolition News Network saying good afternoon.